Hello everyone and welcome back. This is a different little style of video. I'm going to be talking less scripted and not like the same format as my other videos where I'm talking about lore or you know top 5 operators and stuff like that where I have more of a structure. This is still going to have a structure but I'm going to be talking just more freely about a situation which has been happening in the R6 community and with Ubisoft for a good few years at this point. As well as this I would like to mention Mythic Games and any individuals I mention in this video don't send hate to them. This isn't what this video is about. Only names that are brought up in this video are purely context based and are used since they are relevant to the conversation to help you understand what was going on. So to preface this video, for the past couple of years there has been a Rainbow Six board game in development and to this day it's still not released. Now things are looking up, Mythic Games who are the creators of this board game have been showing new production. They did ask backers for more money recently which take that as you will but they did hit the goal they needed and they are claiming that it is in production and it will be coming soon and it is looking brighter for the future of this board game but yes this board game wasn't made by Ubisoft it was made by a board game company known as Mythic Games however it was licensed by Ubisoft and as well as this it was endorsed by members of the Rainbow Six team such as the ex-creative director Leroy and the now creative director Alexander this isn't like a diss to these people just so we are aware um I've never met Leroy seems like a nice guy I met Alexander in Montreal and he was absolutely wonderful, extremely nice guy. And I think Siege is in good hands with him being the creative director. I'm sort of just bringing up their names since it does show that Ubisoft did endorse this product. And now this was via Kickstarter in which you could back this. And depending on the level of backing you'd done for this board game, you would get more add-ons, so more operators you could play with, more maps. But a very big incentive for people to back this board game was the fact that there was going to be exclusive skins you could get in Rainbow Six Siege which were only available via this board game. This would make these skins pretty much ultra rare since it was also tier based as well so only people who'd done the highest tier which was a lot of money I'm one of the highest tier backers with the additional charges which Mythic Games added on recently I've spent like 400 British pounds or even more than that on this board game however I think the board game is cool even with its delays I still think it's going to be a cool product and I'm interested to receive it but one of the coolest things we got was these exclusive skins in game. Now since I'm the highest backer I got all of these exclusive skins and we received these skins quite a while ago. They did say that these skins were going to come first way before we even got the board game as a nice little early treat for us backers and all seemed well. We received our skins. I got all my ultra rare skins. A lot of the backers who paid the same amount of money as I did or even the ones who had done less got the skins in which they were promised and they were exclusive to us just like we were sold. Then some issues started to rise. Mythic Games would go on to put on a statement after we received these skins saying that they actually made a mistake with the exclusivity of these skins and that Ubisoft were going to be releasing them in the in-game store at some point and instead of these being exclusive it would end up being a timed exclusive. However this is not what the consumers were told when they paid for this product. On the page of the Kickstarter even to this day it claimed that all items with the Kickstarter exclusive badge were only exclusive to the Kickstarter and this badge was given on all of these exclusive skins. So from this, the situation seemed that Mythic Games completely just messed up. They thought that they had exclusive rights to these skins. Ubisoft probably told them from the start that they didn't, and this was a mistake on Mythic Games' behalf. However, that is when a tweet arises which Leroy made during the campaign of this Kickstarter talking about these rare skins. A reminder, I'm not putting anything against Leroy, I'm just using the tweet he put out publicly. This is nothing against him personally, don't send hate to anyone involved in this video. But he made a tweet saying, for those who are wondering why these polls matter, there are going to be the most insane rare skins ever made for R6. If you look at the backer, it's only 6.4k even if it doubles by the end of the Kickstarter. It's still max 13,000 people in the entire world who are going to own those skins. So Leroy, the creative director of Rainbow Six Siege at the time, as well as one of the people who publicly endorsed his board game, made a tweet talking about how these skins are going to be exclusive to these backers, even calling them the most insane rare skins ever made for R6. And this was before Mythic Games made the statement saying that the skins are no longer going to be exclusive to the Kickstarter. So then, whose fault was it? We originally thought that this was Mythic Games' fault by just not understanding their partnership with Ubisoft, 
buffed, and it was purely Mythic Games' fault for thinking they had exclusive rights of the skin. So then we also have Leroy, the creative director at the very top of Rainbow Six Siege, also confirming that these skins are going to be exclusive before they done this 180. Now, I don't know how the chain of command works at Ubisoft. I assume that the creative director at the top of Rainbow Six Siege would have known if these skins were always going to be intended to be exclusive or not. To give Leroy the benefit of the doubt, maybe he simply doesn't know and there's heads even higher than him at Ubisoft outside of the Siege team that made this decision. He did seem passionate that these skins were going to be rare, so for it then going to be Ubisoft's decision to not make them rare, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and I want to give the rest of the Siege team the benefit of the doubt that it wasn't their decision to then make them no longer rare. I mean, the fact that the 180 was done, that these skins were no longer going to be exclusive, reflects poorly on him and maybe even Alexander as well, since they did endorse the products. So I can't imagine it was their decision to make this 180 and say these skins aren't exclusive. I've never met Lee Royal, like I was saying, but judging by this tweet, he was happy with them being exclusive and was excited about it. Alexander, who is now the current creative director, seems extremely nice. I've met him in person, and again, I like to think that he wouldn't be one in misleading consumers. I like to think that this issue was higher up at Ubisoft. That being said, regardless of whose fault this was, I'm not trying to point the blame at anyone, consumers were misled, and these skins started to appear back in the in game store. Firstly, the Nook one appeared as a bundle and was in the store for quite a good while up until recently when the ace one started to appear as well. Now, throughout this time, I used my platform to be very vocal. I spent a lot of money to get these exclusive skins, but I make siege content. I can sort of take the risk spending stuff like that just for skins since it's a business for me. I show these skins off to everyone else. I'm a content creator. Content creators are meant to be the ones to sort of buy the stuff that other people shouldn't since we have the intention of also making profit on those skins since we're showing them off in a video. I know that's a little peek behind the veil, but that is how content creation works. You're investing in the game to get an investment out of it. So for me, I'm still spending money on it, but I can get an investment out of it. I made money off the videos I was making on those skins. However, the average person wasn't. I was really annoyed that there was members of this community I am part of that were misled into backing a board game for exclusive skins, even if that was the only thing they wanted. I know there's going to be people in the comments saying, well, why would you spend all that much money on skins even if you didn't want the board game itself or that was the only thing you were backing. That doesn't matter. This is people's money at the end of the day. As long as it's not something illegal, who cares what people spend their money on? If it makes them happy, they can afford it and it's their hard earned money. We should not be one to judge on what people pay for. So me seeing people in the community spending a lot of money on something which was sold as exclusive to then get that removed from them, very annoying for me. You know, I have a platform. I'm part of this community. As much as I may or may not like it, when I say some stuff, it has weight to it. Ubisoft will listen to some things I say. I can speak for people with a smaller platform. So I was very vocal about how there was misleading information on both sides where Mythic are saying that Ubisoft said that it wasn't exclusive. Then you have creative directors at Ubisoft saying it was exclusive. I was saying at the end of the day, regardless of whose fault it was, consumers were misled and Ubisoft re-releasing these skins might have been illegal. I'm not going to say it was illegal. I'm going to try steer of that. I'm not going to dig myself in a hole. I I'll try not to dig myself in a hole. I don't know the law. I just know misleading consumers is a very risky thing. And there's going to be these big government organizations, which you probably wouldn't want investigating stuff, which is potentially misleading consumers. They take that stuff seriously. So I was saying this, like, this is quite risky, Ubisoft. I don't think you should be doing this. And even to this day, I still think it was a very risky thing to do. Again, I don't know the law, but it felt very anti-consumer. However, with all that in mind, I know I've gotten very long in this video to actually get to the point of what I was going to talk about but I just wanted to fill everyone on in the situation if they didn't know. I have learned that the skins are no longer coming back to the in-game store and that they are going to be exclusive to those who backed it via Kickstarter for the Rainbow Six board game. That is the information I have been provided right now. Could this change again in the future and they try and re-release the skins? Maybe they'll be hit with backlash again and again I think that's a very tight rope to walk on especially when it comes to potentially misleading consumers. 
I know I would not want to do that and, you know, potentially risk the consequences in which that has. But I have learned that the Nook skin has been removed from the store. I believe if you did buy it whilst it was in the store, you still do have access to it. And as well as this, the Ace one which appeared in the store, one of my friends managed to get a snapshot of it whilst it was there. That didn't last very long in the store. I think that was removed after like an hour or even less than that. But from what I've been told, the release of these skins in the in-game store have been an accident and they have all been removed immediately. And going forward, that these skins will remain exclusive to the R6 board game and it will never reappear in the store. There you go. Me speaking up and other people speaking up about this has had a consequence and it seems like these skins are going to remain exclusive. So if you're one of the people to have backed this, then hopefully this remains exclusive. If you yourself try this again, I'm going to speak up about it. I don't even care about exclusivity of skins in this game, but if you're going to sell them as exclusive and sell a product with that in mind, then don't go back on it because I'm sorry, there's nothing I hate more than when consumers are misled. I can take risks like this. I'm a content creator, but when people in the community that I love and people who watch my videos and, you know, give me the platform which I have are getting missold like that, then I'm going to use my platform to stand up against that. I don't stand for that stuff, so I'm glad we've had a conclusion for this. And hopefully the next video I make about the R6 board game is with me, with the board game physically in my hand. And it's a positive video. I'm showing off the board game and I'm happy about it. So yeah, a quick too long didn't read for you. R6 board game skins are no longer returning to the in-game shop and will remain exclusive to those who rightfully bought it as exclusive skins via the Kickstarter of the Rainbow Six board game. So yeah, have an incredible rest of your day, everyone. I shall catch you later. Peace.